In this episode, I'm gonna show you how we transform the interior of our dome from a completely empty space into a fully functioning, amazing glamping dome. And it all started with the insulation. Um, we decided to go for like a two-tone so that it looked like the night sky coming down to like the Moroccan desert, that was the plan. Um, so this colour is sandalwood, I want to say. And then we've got that inked blue and then the curtains we've got a gold. So we're kind of going for warmer colours for this dome. Um, so they've actually changed the insulation since we last put them in the other dome and it's I think it fits a bit better and it feels a bit more sturdy um, and also the configuration of it has, has its shape so I think it's a little bit easier. Um, so, so far, so good. So the instructions, um, now that i found them, because I'd accidentally put them in the bag, the insulation was in and lost them, um, are really helpful because now they've got all the numbers on them which correspond to the numbers on the insulation. So that's helping a lot as well. Um, and I was a bit panicked when I couldn't find the instructions. Um, so we're just on this layer now and then, but we still need to get the solar vent in, but we just mainly need to get that one in because the wood burner man's coming tomorrow. So we wanted to try and get as much as we could done, um, just so that otherwise you couldn't install the wood burner because it has to go through the insulation. So uh, we'll probably call it a day in a minute and then finish the rest off later. So we're, doing, we're just got um, Chris here, who's from Glamping Fires, who comes and installs all our wood burners. So he's a Heftas registered installer. So we've got the new wood burner going in here, the insulation's starting to go in, and um, yeah, it's all coming together. Today we're gonna build the bathroom box. So we've basically got all the um, stud work timber up there. Um, I've got my friend Lee helping me, and um, I've basically scored out where the supports are underneath the floor so that we can build the box to this shape. We know that we've got something to screw the um, four by two into. So that's what we're gonna do today. We've got the services already. We just need to make sure we get everything in the right place. And um, yeah, hoping we will get this box done today. So the bath bathroom box is starting to take shape. Um, we've actually got a door sort of in and um, yeah, it's looking good. Um, I'm just glad that I've got Lee on hand because I would have really struggled on my own. I'm just gonna finish off the insulation here. We haven't put the solar vent in yet, so we need to do that before we can get that panel of an insulation in. But um, True Domes have just added which is new for this dome for us, insulation in these edges of the door and also the top of the door. So our other domes don't have it. So this is quite cool, um, but it involves a bit of Velcroing. So I've got the instructions on my phone here. So you're not gonna be able to see because it's flashy, but basically um, you need to add Velcro strips all along the edges. And then these bits have already got Velcro backing on them and then they just sort of stick on. So I'm gonna give that a whirl now. So the insulation is all done now. So I've done that top panel and then this is just the Velcro. The Velcro works really well and then that's, that bit's Velcroed as well. Um, so just having those extra panels makes a massive difference. So major progress on the bathroom has been made. Basically, it's all up. Um, the first fixed plumbing's been done. So we've got um, water into the toilet there and the toilet waste, which you can kind of see out here because we did this before so that the toilet waste can come out and then we've also got shower waste and sink waste into there so this is all going to get boxed in here so you won't see any of that so that's all done obviously all the, all the outside is plied need to ply the ceiling still but we've got a few bits to do with that um so yes shower waste is here shower's gonna go here sink's gonna go over there my sink arrived this is my little sink i'm gonna be using so i need to build something to pop on this onto 
because um, I can't seem to find a vanity unit that will fit this sink, obviously. Um, I've got all the plasterboard in here ready to go. Um, and then, yeah, so this wall is going to get some kind of nice feature wall and the bed's going to go in front of here so you can lie out and look at the view of the rain. Um, and then I'm just trying to work out what's going to go on with this cosy corner here because this is going to be like like little lounge area So I'd like to get something some kind of cosy vibe going on around the fire here um, So I feel a bit happier that it's coming together. And I think once the um, It's all plastered on the inside um, And we can actually get the bathroom fitted then that will make a big difference Right, so this project has been on hold for a little while because I've been getting the event dome done and um, I've literally got no idea what you last saw, but here's an update. So the, it's all plastered, which it may have been last time I showed you, I've got no idea. And stuff's ready for the electric to go in, but I'm gonna paint first. Um, all the tiling's been done behind the shower. So uh, yeah, I like my little like coppery, greeny thing going on here to match my copper sink. So this is the order I've got to work stuff out. Basically, I'm gonna paint everywhere. Then I'm gonna build a vanity because I can't find one that fits my silly sink. So I'm gonna build that. Then I'm gonna tile behind that. And then I'm gonna grout. That's my plan. So I'm gonna get the painting all done with all the plaster today because it's all lovely and dry. So I've got to do a mist coat and maybe a couple of mist coats and then I'm just going to paint it white for now because I can't quite fathom what else I would do. Okay, mist coat is done. I've obviously completely splattered and got paint literally everywhere. Thank goodness there's going to be a floor going down in here. So it's now all mist coated. I'm really gutted because um, it's the Jubilee weekend um, and the Red Arrows just did a fly pass and they flew literally right over the field and I was too late to run out and take a big picture. So I'm gutted, but um, it was amazing to see them go straight over the top of the domes. In my wisdom, I decided to buy this beautiful copper sink off Etsy. However, having done an extensive Google search, I could not find any kind of bathroom vanity holder sink thing that would fit this exact thing. So I'm making my own. Uh, basically, I've just got four by two and I want I want the, it to basically be the same width as this, a little bit um, longer, and then the right height to like wash your face. So I've cut all my bits up that I want, um, and I'm just gonna basically knock up a framework. So I'm probably gonna need to ca need a cameraman's help. But um, yeah, so I did a bit of research as to how high sinks will be. Are they're normally about 86 centimeters. Don't ask me why. So I've done this, so that these will sit here. And then the sink, once I've made the framework, will sit at that height there. So that when you're washing your hands and your face, it's the right height-ish. Okay, right, so let's just screw this all together. Okay, let's see if it sits. Is that what you were envisaging? Mm. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Obviously, the front looks rubbish, but I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Um, but yeah, so that's that, and then there'll be a tap coming up and over there. Hopefully. I just need to varnish it now. Right, I've come to grout, so I've mixed up my grout in my bucket. I'm gutted. You can't even see. I've got, like, bits of coppery stuff i was trying to turn it copper and i didn't i ordered like a sample pack instead of a real pack anyway it's made no difference so i'm just going to go with it and i'm going to grout all the tiles um and then try and get my vanity thing in that we've knocked up so that's the grout done there's something really satisfying about grouting as faffy as it is so now i'm going to try and get the vanity in and then work out where i need to tile around here Dee and I have come to a Moroccan market in uh, in Somerset, would you believe, um, to try and buy some bits and pieces for the dome. Um, so, so far we have found this rather beautiful pinky thing. 
um, and I'm just trying to get some colour inspiration. So we've got some tassels. Oh my days, I love that tassel. Um, but what we're thinking, orange. Yeah. Orange tassels to go with the curtains. Um, and we're just generally getting some inspiration. So yeah, super duper fun. And then they're like, oh, we could make it like bed tight. Oh, yes, something along the bed. the bed. That would be cool. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so, we, we, so we're basically furnishing a geodesic dome for a glamping site. Excellent. Mother. And so, <laughs> so we thought we, we like hung this from the very yeah. top above the dome and then it could go over the bed theoretically. Oh, it's just, this is my favourite. Yeah. So that was very successful. We've got our uh, bags of stuff. Um, spent £165, but I think we've got an excellent set of accessories and also it cemented what we're doing in the way of insulation curtains and stuff like that, I think. So uh, all in all, very successful. I haven't filmed for a while. Things have been quite stressful. I don't know what it is. We've been concentrating on the event dome and the glamping dome's kind of got a bit waylaid. And it is Wednesday and we have guests in on Friday and I'm going to show you the state of the place. So things have moved on. All the, um, the plumber came, got the shower screen in, uh, we made our box and we've got the sink in. Then Lee came and tiled behind it yesterday and we've had the electrician in to put the light and the solar, like the extractor fan. Um, we've got a toilet and now I'm just uh, making sure everything's painted. Rachel's been and painted the whole box for me. I've just finished painting inside as well, so it's just white at the minute. We've got no light, so it's quite tricky because if you come in here and you have to shut the door to paint, it's pitch black. So, um, yeah, I still need to get beds in here. We've got the curtains up, so that really helps for keeping the heat out. Um, and we've changed the normal ones to carabiners so that they're a bit easier to pull. Um, obviously the fire's in, so that's good. And we are planning on building bunk beds in around the back here, but that definitely won't happen for, when, for whatever day it is, Friday. So we're going to be using, a, a, we'll probably put a single bed in here and a single bed in here, um, just, for, just for this time, just for this weekend to get through this. Double bed needs to go here, and uh, yeah, we it, it will be done. It has to be done. Here we are. It is bed making day, and Vicky's been hard at work painting the box. She got a friend Rachel to help. I think actually, thinking about it, Rachel did most of the painting. So Vicky's now hard at work over here, building some beds. Roped my dad in to help her, and. Yeah, so what's your theory? You what, you're putting one bed over here and one bed on the other side? At the moment, yes. Okay. But it might but we're gonna build built in bunk beds here. But you're planning on building bunk beds along this wall? Yeah. To okay. like cover all the pipes and stuff. Okay. So I think you're not covering these pipes in this week. Uh not for this immediate one going on now, no. Oh, okay. Uh, we just got to get it habitable. These no, have got good on there. Habit. Yeah. So once we've got it habitable for this weekend, yeah, because we're up against it, then we're gonna next week we're gonna build the bunk beds. It's almost like a birthday. This you've known about this oh, for geez. a long time, but it still comes upon you very quickly. That is exactly what happens. Because yeah. yeah, I've given myself an extra three months, and that didn't. That... And that hasn't worked at all because we've got guests coming to stay in here in. Just over a day's time. I think yeah. it's about 26 hours or something. Don't tell me an hour. I don't want to know in hours. Yeah, so we've got guests staying in here in 26 hours and there's still a lot to do. So if I show you folks, so as we go around, as you can see, the beds all still need. However, in here, the bathroom is done. With the exception of, we still need to put a plinth around the bottom, but otherwise, we have lights, we have the extractor fan working. It's all looking good. Vicky even put it in the vinyl floor, so that's looking good. So it's really all good. I'm so pleased we have these beds in the container. We had two single beds and a king size bed in the container from when my mum passed away and we got all her furniture. Yep. So, um, so yeah, she'll be pleased that they're going to good use. 
Um, although whether or not we'll keep these single beds, we might keep these single beds for the bell tent or for the mini dome. I that think we've for got. the mini dome, definitely. There'll be a video of that coming up as soon as we get around to building it. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've been so busy building the big dome and this dome that we haven't got around to building the mini dome. Well, when Megan comes, we'll put the mini dome up for Megan's group, I think. How many weeks is that? Not next weekend. Not this weekend. Not next weekend. Not the weekend after. Like three weeks, like that. Because you do realise I need a holiday. I need a rest. I'm letting you have a holiday the weekend after that. We had a cancellation, we're just going to keep it cancelled. So we can oh, have a weekend off. I really, really do need a holiday. Yeah, me too. Desperately. Yeah, but I do a full time day job. <laughs> um, what, and I don't? This is your full time day job. Yeah. You, you don't, I don't see you coming and helping me write code in my full time day job. Um, no. You don't have to help if you don't want to. After our regular argument of who works the hardest, I thought I would just show you where I put all my Moroccan finds. So the, um, in the end, we went with these maroon tassels, which basically gave me the idea for the colour for the box. We managed to get the curtains up. So these are gold coloured curtains. So sandalwood, gold, quite similar, but kind of gives the rich colours that I wanted. So gold curtains and the tassels. And then this is where I hung my tent. So I just put a hook at the top and then um, the same hooks at the side so that they just kind of swag back up around the bed. But I would quite like to extend this out. So put a piece of wood from here. So that this tent, because I think it would look quite cool if we could get it like to come further out so you're kind of under a canopy like a mosquito net but i'll have to fathom and see if i can do that so we scraped it together by the skin of our teeth and now we have a week to try and get the next lot of stuff done before the next guests arrive so to give us some more space in here i've got a sofa going in there and so obviously there's no special bed there i didn't really want the bed there because eventually we're hopefully going to have a spiral staircase going up to here eventually that might be next year so lee is building me bunk beds in here so it's like the kids have their own little bedroom and then when they add on when they put quit the kids to bed then they don't know the kids in there that's the idea so um and it also serves the purpose of boxing in all the pipe work that's under there so again it's friday and we've got guests arriving today and the place is a state um, I'm still trying to paint the bunk beds. I was here till like half past ten last night, just getting the bunk beds um, a, a kind of whitewashed undercoat primer. They're going to be gold, but not for today, unfortunately. Um, and then I've got a couple of beds I don't need now, and then a sofa that's in pieces, mattresses all over here. Um, the bedding's all done, apart from that. Now I need to like transfer the bedding onto the bunk bed. So. All in all, it's a total nightmare, and I'm gonna. So it's like ten to eight now. So just before the school run, I'm gonna try and finish off the primer, um, so that I can then dry, so I can then get the mattresses back on, um, and in general, it's just all go. Our second set of guests have gone, so now I've got a week before the next set arrive, and I need to change the bunk bed colour. So now I'm gonna paint them gold. Is the plan? So I'm gonna see how that covers, um, but I really don't know. I don't know. I'm in a total mattress mess because. I put the mattresses on so people could stay here and leave it white and now I want to try and get the gold on it for the next people coming in. It is now totally finished, we've had our, like our full set of guests um, and I'm, I'm happy with it, I think this is how it's going to stay for this summer, however I really wanted to put a mezzanine up there and the whole reason for putting this bathroom box in the centre, uh, my original plan, was nothing to do with getting bunk beds behind, originally there was going to be a staircase up here but that all went to pot because we couldn't figure out how to do it safely. So I'd really still like to do the mezzanine, but it would involve basically putting gigantic barrier things here. And then I was wanting to hang this tent from the top so that nobody could slip through any kind of barriers or anything like that. It's just really stressful trying to make it completely childproof. Then we bought this spiral staircase, which I was going to put here. But actually, now that we've got the bunk beds, there's no reason why you couldn't climb up the bunk beds up here. And then once you're up here, then you could have another couple of steps or like rungs up to get on top here. So, oh my days of cobwebs. This is the only problem we have to get up here and dust. So 
this box can perfectly take the weight of how many people, like adults. Um, but I'm thinking that as, as the kids would ha then have, like they'd have their bunk bed and then they'd be able to climb up here through a little gap, have a barrier all around. And then this could be like quite a cool little space with like some cushions and um, I don't know. It's maximum effort for not a lot, but I think for kids, like every kid loves a den, right? So that is what I'm thinking. But this is definitely not going to be till next year. And I think we're going to save the spiral staircase because the spiral staircase was like a thousand pounds. So, um, and I can't really send it back because I've unboxed it and I've stored it in the container. It's been sat there for like two months. So I think we're just going to save that spiral staircase with the view that maybe in a couple of years time, we might buy True Domes' eight metre dome and then make a proper mezzanine level. But I need to get over this year first and like give us a couple of years off of the building before I even think about that sort of thing. So yeah, here I am from the top of the dome um, and I hope you like the interior. I'd love to, you to let me know what you think and um, in our next episode we'll be showing you how we built the whole of the outside area. Um, so yeah, have a great day and we'll see you again soon.